Hello Internet. So let's talk a little bit about message formats. Um, if you've used the Internet ever, then you have had data transferred over some kind of message format. And a lot of the time we're talking about either hypertext formats, which contain um, like web pages and such, or structured data formats. And the thing is, different structured data formats have different properties, benefits, and like pros and cons, right? The, one of the most popular at the moment is uh, JSON. And there are people who seem to think that that's the only one, um, ignoring the whole host of other options that there are. And, you know, some of the other options are worse, others are um, better in some cases. JSON is, is kind of a happy middle in a lot of ways, but, but like we must not be blind to the negatives of it. And so I just wanted to go through a couple of them and specifically talk about it in a kind of top-down hierarchical way, right? So let's start with the, the kind of big two categories, right? One is text formats and the other is binary formats. And so on some level, a text format is also a binary format. The question is more about whether it's human readable or not. Right? Um, human readable formats include things like, um, well, XML, which is basically a pretty heavyweight tag based format. Um, then you have JSON, uh, you can talk about YAML, and in some sense, um, JSON is a subset of YAML, which basically makes you wonder, what the hell is YAML even thinking, right? What, 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 what are they even trying to do? And then you have things like TOML uh, and so on, right? On the binary side, you have a number of options. Uh, BSON, which is a binary uh, object, uh, structured object notation, right? Um, you have Smile, uh, you've got Message Pack, you've got uh, Protocol Buffers, you have, well, uh, a number of others. ASN1, uh, if you go back in time or run into some ancient software. Um, and you, I, I guess the, um, yeah, there's there's one important one I'm kind of forgetting at the moment. Uh, it's it's relatively recent. It's uh, it's one of those Apache things, right? So anyway, point is, we have somehow ended up with a software industry that is very, shall we say, addicted to the human readable formats, despite the fact that. For the vast majority of the messages that are sent through the internet, humans are never going to actually read them. And so I think it's worthwhile just thinking a little bit about the overheads associated with these different formats. Because, okay, let's start with XML. This is a no-brainer. XML is intended to be human readable for the sake of being human readable. Uh, it doesn't actually give us any particular benefits beyond that. Um, parsing it is a bit of a nightmare. Um, it, it, you know, the, the definition is quite long. Um, the, uh, the conformance tests that come from the specification, there's about 3,000 of them. Um, and you need to handle not just regular tags, but also attributes to the tags. You need to support tag nesting. It's got uh, format peculiarities like C data and PC data, which are basically different ways of including data that might contain things that look like tags inside of the document. Um, it, it does a lot of things um, in, in obnoxious ways. There's a doc type thing which is included for uh, backwards compatibility with SGML, a markup language that Frankly, nobody really uses anymore because uh, turns out that turned out to be a bad idea. Um, <laughs> and, and so, but the the time it takes to parse a XML document is quite high. You put that on the on the high end of the, the spectrum of um, formats that are slow, right? Um, then there's things like JSON. Uh, actually, let's talk about YAML for a moment. 
YAML is intended to be human readable. Um, actually, I'm just going to go over here. It's, it's nice. Um, yeah, YAML is intended to be human readable. But as anybody who's ever worked with something like Kubernetes, which is a heavily YAML based system, <laughs> knows, uh, YAML is something where it's very error prone. It's very easy to accidentally uh, make some pretty critical mistakes because indentation is meaningful, but like there's a, you know, whether you put a dash at the beginning of the line or indent it to match the thing, it, it just becomes a complete mess from a human readability perspective. I know some people like it, but <laughs> Those people are making excuses for all of the mistakes they made when writing YAML documents. I'm not even joking. So, okay. Um, but from a computational perspective, it gets worse. Because um, it's really hard to parse. Uh, there are so many, so many like weird side rules and extra rules and, and things that can go... Um, go wrong in parsing that it, it's worse than XML what can I say it's uh, it, it's on the heavy end of the spectrum both in terms of human readability and in terms of computational complexity in fact the only benefit it has over something like XML is that there's less boilerplate maybe right so, okay, but essentially both of these structures, uh, like, they allow you to uh, define arbitrary structures. Okay, JSON is very popular because there's so little boilerplate involved. Um, all of the characters are relatively, like, they're, you, you don't have a lot of extra stuff. You basically specify either objects or lists, and then you, you know, and then you put key value pairs or strings or numbers but JSON is really badly defined um, so there's a couple of numbers that are very important to be able to represent if you're doing anything with numbers um, because so the the definition of a number in JSON allows um, you to have positive or negative um, uh, digits with arbitrarily many uh, numbers after a point, but it doesn't allow you to define things like infinity or not a number, which are important numbers if you're dealing with, um, with floating point arithmetic. And if you're not dealing with floating point arithmetic, you might still want to be able to define, um, you know, like most of the time when you're working with JSON documents, the thing that you're going to be doing is converting these textual numbers that exist in the JSON document into either integers or floating point numbers. And so the fact that it doesn't support these, uh, these parts of the floating point number specification, uh, that is to say, um, uh, infinity, positive and negative infinity, and not the number, both positive and negative, it limits very strictly what can practically be done with the format. Um, in particular, any any case where not a number is a meaningful response is out, right? Unless you put it as a string, in which case now you need your, your parsing step to uh, differentiate between between numbers that are coming in and strings. It, it becomes a mess pretty quickly. On top of that, People tend to behave as if parsing JSON is free. It is not. Um, most of the JSON parsers out there are actually pretty slow. And uh, there have been some efforts to make, make faster ones. Um, the the SIMD JSON project is really cool because it's uh, choosing uh, modern CPU mechanisms to uh, the full advantage to kind of be quick at at parsing but it's still like quite a bit overhead so you know there are other textual formats I'm not going to talk about Toml actually I think in terms of like human readable formats that are intended to be human readable as a priority and you know uh, where you are intentionally sacrificing the the parsing speed 
Tommel is actually one of my favorites. It, it is pretty good. Uh, it's relatively concise. It's kind of, it's structured in a meaningful way for humans and it supports everything you need to support. Um, it also has downsides. I won't get into that in the sake of brevity. Um, but so all of this is, you know, from the perspective of we want to be able to edit these documents, these uh, these structured data documents with text editors, or we want to be able to inspect uh, the payload of a packet that came over the network without having to use any special tools. Fair enough, except, as I say, the vast majority of the time that you are working with any of these documents, you are not actually looking at them. So it makes sense to maybe say something like, hey, how about we have a, uh, you know, use the textual formats for reading and writing and then have a good set of tools for switching over to a binary format for the 99.99% of the time that we're, we're, where speed is actually preferable to human readability. And, you know, in the same vein, make it make that tooling good enough that it's easy to switch back or easy to convert between them as needed right and so then we come into the realm of all of these binary formats now i'm not going to say much about the different ones uh i will say um protocol buffers is pretty heavyweight and opinionated it, it it's a it's a cool google thing it's a library i really like it in a lot of ways because it kind of it gets a lot of things right but uh, because it's trying to get a lot of things right in a very specific way it's very commingled with code generation and um and these kind of things which are oriented towards um like helping you build the code automatically which kind of means that it gets in the way a lot of the time um it it just yeah it, it, i i find that it's way too heavyweight for a lot of use cases and it also because it's so heavyweight and because it's so built into a very specific tool chain you end up either going all in on it or or just not using it. And I think that's a big downside for these kind of formats because you want to be able to just pick it up and start using it without a lot of hassle. The same goes for, I think it's called Thrift, the one I was uh, struggling with earlier, um, uh, the Apache one. It, it, it has the same kind of thing. It's, it's a little bit heavyweight, right? So instead you have these other options like message pack and BSON. I like message pack the most of, of these, uh, mostly because it's just so damn simple. And, you know, I would argue, and I am arguing here, that for 99.9% .9 of the use cases that people have, you know, message pack would be the acceptable solution. And, you know, not just for um, communication over a network, but maybe even for storing data, configuration files, and that kind of thing. If, and this is a big if, if we have a tool chain, um, you know, command line tools, um, the plugins for browser, you know, things like that, that make converting between JSON and message pack, uh, well, you know, JSON, Plus, I'm going to call it JSON Plus because we need to address the shortcomings, the, the things that are missing in JSON, but let's call it JSON Plus. Being able to convert between the two, um, make that easy enough that, that all of the overhead associated with switching to something like Message Pack goes away. When you do that, then what you'll find is that suddenly the amount of data being transferred in most queries goes down. The parsing time goes down, so the speed of your applications goes up. Um, you know, generally speaking, you just win everywhere. Except, of course, you need to have this toolchain. I'm sad that this toolchain doesn't already exist, and I know the people who, who advocate for things like Message Pack or BSUN or what have you are aware of this. But 
you know, I, and and there are tools out there. It's not like there's uh, there's an empty void, right? But you know, I feel like we're we're so close to being able to significantly upgrade what we're doing and be in a place where you know sending relatively uh, high density uh, binary data that's fast to uh, to work with becomes the norm or can become the norm at least right I think that's an exciting thing to work towards um, and I know I'm you know in a lot of the cases we're only talking about maybe gains of 10 15 percent but if you're exchanging like you know 500 messages a minute right or let's call it 600 messages a minute so 10 10 messages a second right and the parsing time of each one is you know 30 milliseconds with with json but it goes down to three milliseconds um with message pack then you just gained a well tenfolding of the amount of compute power that you have you just saved 10 times the amount of computer that you need for running servers and so on what so on and on top of that you just reduce the amount of data by some factor and like it accumulates so don't think about the cost of the individual messages think of the aggregates here the aggregates get to be huge and if we're not thinking about that we're not thinking about the big picture we're not thinking about the the enormous amounts of of time and energy that are being wasted on encoding and decoding json and xml and all of these others all over the world all the time uh you know like we're talking probably i i i, I hate to like you know come up with a figure it's going to be wrong but but it's a lot and i think we can do a lot better and i think what we need to do that is uh, good tool chains and um and and for people to care a little bit about the benefits of having done that so anyway okay that was a bit of a long rant uh i'm gonna quit now while i'm well somewhat ahead uh but yeah uh let me know what you think uh, is it worth it or shall we just like continue burning energy and resources on on slow message formats yeah see ya